welcome back to the channel. I am the code searcher, Jonathan. And uh, can you guess what I want to talk to you about? That's right, this upcoming solar eclipse. Um, I don't mean to make light of it either, because uh, historically, uh, the ramifications of um, this kind of event usually uh, is very profound. So, uh, please, allow me to take a few minutes of your time uh, to show you a few things that I've come across and what I've discovered in the codes. Now, there were, uh, I don't know, hundred of you that saw a video I uploaded um, around 3 o'clock in the morning and I very promptly took it down. <clears throat> and I just want to explain that. Um, when you would stop me three times from doing a video or putting up a table, I know it's very clear there's something else he wants to show me. So the table I had was incomplete, uh, and that is why the video came down. Uh, and indeed, he showed me some, some more things uh, that were extremely, um, well, convincing. Um, if you allow me to show you this to you, I think um, you'll see something really profound here as well. Uh, so, without further ado, let's just look at uh, solar eclipses historically. And, um, you know, I want to thank Brother Steve at Discover Ministries, who um, brought this to my attention in one of his recent presentations. August 21st, 1914. Now, the solar eclipse we're going to see is August 24th, uh, 2017, so roughly 100 years ago, uh, thereabouts. There was a solar eclipse that went across um, Europe, and not too long after that, folks, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I think World War II was just getting started, about two months in, um, and then there was um, a solar eclipse. Now this is always, always throughout time have been a bad omen or some sort of, a, of, of sign from the Most High. Uh, he's telling us something, the scriptures are very clear, that he uses signs and wonders from the sun, moon, and stars to communicate with the Maseroth. Now at World War I, um, some 9 mil million combatants were killed and 7 million more civilians died. Uh, after that. So take that in consideration. It was a solar eclipse, a very profound one. And uh, then World War II, excuse me, World War I, uh, incidentally, there, there was one also in a World War II. Uh, even greater casualties there. Uh, but before we go to World War II, um, June 8th, 1918, uh, the path that you're going to see here in August is the very same path that went across the United States in 1918. Now, why is this significant? Um, well, at the time that this went across, America was entering into what would would be the worst pandemic uh, the world had ever seen up until that time. Some 500 million people um, were affected by this, and some 100 million um, died. Uh, I think it's somewhere around 670 thousand Americans. So at the time of the crossing of this, um, this eclipse, America was just getting started with um, a plague that was striking the nation. And, and this uh, thing went right across, just as it's going to do um, in just less than a month from now. So um, that's August 21st, 2017, the very same path. Now, does this mean anything? Does it mean there's going to be war? Is there going to be a plague? Uh, what's going to happen? I'm not saying something's going to happen on the day. Folks, please, I'm not making any predictions here. I'm making an educated um, observation here. And then I'm, I'm about to show you something in the scriptures that the Father put there 3,500 years ago because the access term we're going to look at is Eclipse 777, which is the Hebrew year, 5777 this year. Jubilee, quite possibly, um, and here we have this very significant solar um, eclipse upon us. So um, let me just, before we go there, 
I want to take you back to Yellowstone first. Because not too long ago, we just talked about Yellowstone. And if you recall, it has the eclipse in here. And you see, this particular table uh, is a Torah code. It is found exclusively in the Torah. Uh, and I believe it does um, resonate judgment. Uh, it's very clear that many of you are looking for this rapture uh, to take place in September. Well, I believe there's a catching away that is definitely connected. Yeshua will fulfill the remaining feast to the moment. Uh, so, But I do believe it's connected to the second coming, not a pre-trib rapture. We will see some tribulation, folks. It's very clear. Yeshua said, ye shall see tribulation. Now, the reason I'm, I'm bringing this, this table out, before I show you what I just found, and, um, you know, I was so um, motivated to get a video out to you, at three o'clock in the morning that, that uh, there were three different things that happened that caused me not to do that. So I knew there was something else they wanted to show me. This verse that runs through there, um, if you recall from the video I did on Yellowstone, is talking about the destruction of this rebellious people uh, because of their sins, yada, yada, yada. You'll see it in the next table I'm going to show you. But notice here it has plagues in here. So uh, we are at, it, apparently in this table, Close to the seals. The sixth seal is mentioned. Um, there are several dates, and the current year is also up here. Now, fast forward over to the table I'm talking about. Um, now, the Yellowstone table, this is the, the same one you just saw. Uh, this is my file here, not the annotated. Um, and if you recall from the, the, the um, last presentation we did on this, I'll just update you. Um, Nibiru was found here in reverse. Uh, this is a planetary body that is possibly connected to Wormwood of Revelation 8 and will make an interaction with um, our solar system, I believe, and will cause chaos, plasma, um, discharge, and the like. Uh, we have earthquakes over here, a time of Sukkot. Sukkot is a Hebrew um, a feast, that uh, feast of Yahuwah, that is still yet to be fulfilled. It is the very last one, Tabernacles, when we tabernacle with him. So uh, it just happened to be lined up with earthquakes. That's, you know, a significant anomaly there. Um, so Wormwood, uh, excuse me, Namiru, earthquakes, we covered that. Let's go to the other one now. Now this is what I just pulled up last night. Really not a lot of time in it. A few hours last night, or excuse me, into the night, into the morning, and it's a few hours today. Um, several of things I did uh, find, like this here, since and uh, this, and uh, a couple things down here, since I tried to do that video. So you're in luck. There's more content here. Just hang in there. It's because I want to show you the correlation between historical uh, fact, things that have already happened, with a solar eclipse you will use it as a harbinger of warning folks so we have uh, the eclipse top shin on zine which is 777 hebrew year we are currently in we have the word plague going across there uh, what we have highlighted here with the united states running through there is the very same one you just saw in um yellowstone you see nibiru right there it's the same one see it's re running in reverse and here's the the verse I was just talking about, about um, you were talking about destroying this people because of their wickedness, right? Uh, well, here's a, a new anomaly that um, came up. It's really profound. I don't know what it means. Uh, I had to double check it with Darla. You got out the dictionary to make sure I was right before I did this video uh, because I was just kind of blown away by it. But uh, we got Turah, which is trumpets. This is the very same word, Yom Turah, uh, which is, um, if you want to call it Rosh Hashanah, this is the time of trumpets up at the top in this skip of negative 50 folks now this is got jubilee written all over it uh, in reverse it's et zarah which is a time of trouble right then we have a comet involved there's a comet um there's also next year so we have a the current year and then next year as well uh, next year is also down here with the beer root and wormwood coming together. There's also those three letters. Mot is death. Uh, we also got the United States down here. 
war. That's the other thing. Remember how the connection with the solar eclipse. Uh, traditionally, with these tables that are dealing with the end times that I've been showing you, we've seen war three times, which have told me World War Three, World War Three. However, there have only been a few times where war clusters um, in more than one occasion, and, and it kind of stands out. So we have it here actually in five times in the plain text, and then one time in a smaller ELS. Um, it is actually all over this table, but I uh, streamlined it down to only the smallest skip and kept those. It seemed to make out a pattern. We do have the word Zophon in here, which is hidden. Um, back up to this anomaly, that very same word you see there in the blue is here in the plain text. The plagues, remember plagues from... Um, Yellowstone, you see right there. This is the very same word. We've got Nibiru over here. <clears throat> so that is it right there. Now running down, we have Netzer Arav. Netzer Arav with Ketz and the Fallen. Connecting to Nibiru. Now what's Netzer? Uh, Netzeri is where uh, it comes from Nazareth. Yeshua of Nazareth is the Netzer, a branch. Um, it is also the word used uh, for Paul. Was it in Acts, Darla? Yeah, Matt. Where they refer to Paul as the Netzri, from the sect of the Netzri. It means guardian or watchman. Um, it is also the term used for the first believers. The body was called the Netzri. It was not called the church, folks. So the very same word for the body is the very same word for the watchman. Or the guardians. The guardians of what? The guardians of the way. The guardians of the truth. Okay. So, connected with Nibiru. Uh, and plagues. And fallen. And kets. Which means the end. Is the very base word of this word here. Which is achret hayamim. Which is the end of days. It's the very same. When you come, uh, permutate those two letters together. It means the end. The very end. It is very clear to... Hebrew-speaking people, when they see those, it means the end. And you have Netzer Araf, which means the ambush of the watchman. There's an ambush involved with Nibiru. Could it mean that it catches them unaware? There are not many of us that talk about this star. I know one um, good friend of mine, Planet 7X um, researcher, Gil Broussard, sees the same kind of connection. as a harbinger. It's connected to um, the end of days, for sure. Uh, so there's a Netzer, of a Rav, an ambush of the Watchmen, or the Guardians. Um, down here, let's go to the verse. <clears throat> First, let's just look at that one there. So we can confirm this is the very same one. <clears throat> Excuse me. From Yellowstone. And we're in uh, <clears throat> Midbar, 14th chapter, 35th verse. And I who have said, I, sh I will surely do unto all this evil congregation that are gathered against me in this wilderness. And they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. <clears throat> so it has the United States in that verse. Right there, folks. Um... I've also seen this connected in the, another one, a Shemitah table that we did back in the time of the Shemitah where this same verse run right through, uh, connected to judgment and other things. So he's been warning us a while, uh, 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 many warnings um, compiled on to one another. We need to pay attention. Now I'm going to take you down uh, to this one. This is a promise to the remnant, which is Isaiah Um 35.10 And the ransom of Yahuwah shall return and come to Zion with songs of everlasting joy upon their heads and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and the sighting uh, shall flee away. Um, and then down here um, let's look at Joel first. Here in Joel there's two mentions of uh, war in this one verse of I didn't highlight it, but we'll take a look at it just because I think it's profound. It's the fourth chapter of Joel. Check out what's happening here. Uh, there's a sickle 
for the harvest is right. Where do you hear that for? Uh, not only in Joel, but you also hear this in Revelation. All right, so uh, let me just back you up. And we'll get the um, context of what's happening in Joel. This is yet to happen, right? Uh, the end of days is a benchmark in time, folks. Uh, it happens some 14 times in the plain text, uh, and uh, he's always referring to the times you're living in now. So what I'm about to read you applies to now. Get, keep that in mind. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all the nations, and I will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them, for their, for therefore they are my people, and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. Right? Remember um, Ezekiel 4, where uh, he is told, you know, the, the time frame of the exile and the diaspora, that he was going to scatter them for their sins, scatter them among the nations, and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlan, sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. Yea, and when, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? If ye, it, and if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly present things. And the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, ye have sold to the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. The Greeks, right? Behold, I will raise them out of the place where, the doubt, where ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters in the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabines, to a people far off, or who has spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare for war. What? So, we're talking about a solar eclipse. He's telling the Gentiles, prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. What are you seeing in the news right now, folks? With North Korea, with the United States, just fired a Minuteman 3 um, ICBM. Show of force. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say that I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourself together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahuwah. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. What is this? This is Armageddon. Armageddon. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And here's where I just mentioned, put ye the sickle, the harvest is ripe. There's a gathering coming up. Get, come, get you down. For the press is full, for the fats overflow. Their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for you. For the day of Yahuwah. Same word that's right here. For the day of Yahuwah is near in the valley. Not in the same verse. We're not even here. This is another time it appears. For the day of Yahuwah is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining who also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahuwah will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So ye shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. And then shall Jerusalem be holy shall no strangers pass through her anymore. <clears throat> and obviously, I kept going. But let me get, before we close this out, I'm going to read you this next one. Because this is the very last of, um, you know, your, uh, to not before it goes into the New Testament. We are in Malachi. What does he promise there? 322. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servants, which I commanded 
unto him in Horeb for all of Israel and the statutes and the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahuwah. That same word there we just talked about in Joel appears again. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's what I got highlighted there. So, um, with that, I'm going to close it out on this. This is what I have for you in this presentation, folks. And I hope you can see the connection to the scriptures. That, I mean, the Father has this. Uh, clearly, it's there, encoded in his word. 3,500 years ago, he put this very day with a benchmark of the time we're in, the end of days, and all this information is encoded in this matrix. It tells you something. It tells you to pay attention to what is about to happen. Folks, if you want to get involved, I would encourage you. Um, come come, train and uh, learn Hebrew. Do some codes. There's room for you in the school. All you need to do is go to thecodesearcher.com forward slash apply and uh, set up an appointment. We'll talk on the phone. We'll get you in the class. We are getting into some new th things. Um, there's a lot to search out, folks. The Book of Enoch, uh, new co-programs we're getting designed. A lot of exciting things. Please get involved. And if you want to get involved some other way, donate to the ministry. You can also go to decodesearcher.com forward slash donate if you want to help out. So until the next video, shalom, and we'll see you then.